I have a long history with letters. Do you, uh, do you like letters? Like writing letters, like actually writing. My history uh, was I had a pen pal when I was quite young. So when I was in year five, six, I had a pen pal in, um, in Florida. And so I got it from a little magazine and I wrote and we kept writing right through high school. So about four or five years, we wrote to each other, didn't know each other, just saw pictures, sent pictures and um, letters. And it was interesting that the words, even though we, we actually got to know each other because it, it actually told about we were able to tell about our dreams, about what we saw around us, what our life was like here. And she would tell what her life was over in Florida and the beaches and everything. And I got, actually got to know her reasonably well. Still have never met her. And then we stopped writing and that was it. It got a bit longer in between. Well, when I was uh, in my about 19, I ended up with a, a girlfriend who is now my wife, Sonia. Well, after a couple of years of going out, we've been going out for two years and my wife was about to start into uh, nursing up in Queensland um, in nurse training. So she was going to the Princess Alexandra Hospital up there and I was going to Avondale College. Well, I was a very poor college student. And if you know anything about college, it was costing a lot and I didn't have much money and I had to had to photocopy a heap of stuff. So I all my spare cash went into that and we used to have to feed money. It wasn't a mobile phone and you just pick up and do and it didn't matter how many um, how many minutes that you spent on it. This one, you paid by the minute and you fed coins into the slot at the top and you held on and when you ran out of coins, it just dropped out. And so some nights we'd be talking and it would just drop out. Sonia would spend money down. But what we found is that we only ever talked about things that were immediate, the things that we could remember in our immediate context. And so we started to write letters. So every week we would write one, two letters, and we started to get to the deeper feelings and the deeper um, thoughts and dreams that we had, and we'd, we'd write, and then every day I'd run down to the, the letterbox, my little pigeon box that I, I used to get mail in, and I'd have a look. Oh, sometimes I get disappointed, but you know, um, I love getting letters. I love giving letters. Harder to write. And I wonder, do you love getting letters? How many letters would you have received? So some of you have written letters. How many of you have actually received letters? In 2010, my family and I were traveling through Italy and we're going from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is very small, by the way. You think, from my dreams as a young person, I thought the Tower of Pisa was this amazing thing in the middle of, of some city, but it was only a very small tower beside a church on a big lean. And as you lean, and we went from Pisa, a Leaning Tower of Pisa, we went up and we were going to Venice. Venice, the city of love, you know, with the, with the violins and the gondolas and, you know, really, we, we were looking forward to it. We stopped off at a little city called Verona. We didn't, like me, I didn't know anything about Verona, but we came across this place. And it's the traditional home of the Capulet family. Now, do you know what it was? The Capulet family was Juliet, home family, or traditionally, and that is where Romeo was standing, traditionally. And looking down, Romeo, Romeo, where far art thou, Romeo? Where Juliet was, was standing and looking down, and, and there's a statue of Juliet there. Now, this place has actually been immortalized in some ways because it's an actually tragic story because what we do know is uh, Romeo, they don't get together. He ends up dying. So it's a bit of a tragedy. But this city took the tragedy and decided that, you know what, we're going to do something about this and they actually put up a wall. Now, 
This is what it looks like. So people from all over the world come to Verona and they write love letters and they put them on the wall. And this city is now known as the city of love. Now, you know, there's been movies and you might have seen some of them to, to um, Juliet with love, um, you know, where people have stashed a letter to a, loved, a lover that, you know, they don't expect to get it. And years later, like when they're older, somebody has found the letter and then actually gone and taken the letter to these people. And, and you know, I, I don't know, um, with every letter, there, is, you know, there are certain structures with all these letters, these little messages for people, maybe their lover, maybe somebody that they don't know. You know, there is a, you know, a structure. So one, there is, uh, there, there's a context for it. Now, the definition is the circumstance that form the setting for an event, statement, or, or idea. It's the place from where, when you're looking at those circumstances, you can under, understand it. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually got an SMS from somebody that was sending it to the wrong person. I have, and I'm going, like, I wonder, I, I wonder, you know, and, and it could be something, you know, as look out the window when you're nowhere near anywhere where you can see a window and nobody is coming and you go to the window and there's nobody there. Well, well that's context, isn't it, really? Like, um, so, you know, context is in, important. I, I remember um, I got, got home from work one night when I was a police officer and I had an SMS and it said, uh, help me. Now, I looked at it and I went, what? Help me? And I, and what had happened is my friend had actually sent it um, when we were searching for somebody in the middle of the night, we were going through back alleys and, and looking for somebody. So context was really important to that because I rang them and they were asleep, dead to the world. So the context was really important. So not only context, but there's also contents. What are the things um, that are held or contained in something? So content. What is the content of your life? Matthew um, says this, do you want to stand out? Then step down, be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you are content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Now, that's Matthew. So if you're content with the content of your life, and sometimes, you know, at the moment, we're not always content with where we're at in life. You know, we've got, you know, we haven't graduated. You might be, you have a few more years of high school and you go, oh, you know, I'll just wait till then until I can be all that I can be. Or, you know, COVID, you know, it's such a barrier in front of us. I can't see through that. You know, I, 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 you know, I'll just wait until that's over to really live my life. Or, you know, um, you know, it, it, we get tied up with, with our stuff that's going on that we don't invest in the relationships that are around us. So the content that we, we don't like the content of our lives and we use that as an excuse to push aside actually living the life that we should be living. You know, Matthew says, be content to simply be yourself and it will count. You know, um, but the last one is this. Who gets the credit for it? You know, it's publicly acknowledging that someone as a participant. We tell ourselves and we take credit for our lives, yeah? Now, there's these guys, there's a lot of guys, the, the epistles from the apostles, and these guys wrote these letters. And now they had some really bad things going on for them. Paul wrote from prison, you know, Peter ended up, you know, being crucified. Yeah, like there's all sorts of stuff happened to these guys. It wasn't a nice time to live. But they wrote these letters of encouragement to this new group of people who believed in this, 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 um, this God with, in Jesus. And, you know, this is what Paul writes about your life and my life. And he's writing to Corinthians and he goes, your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Christ himself wrote it, not with ink, but with God's living spirit, not chiseled in stone, 
but carved into human lives and we published it. You know, what would it be if your letter, the letter of your life, was published to the world? You know, and sometimes we think that we are the ones that have to take the credit and the responsibility. You know, so sometimes we get this thing and we say to ourselves, I'm selfish. Or I'm lazy. Or I'm dumb. Or I'm unattractive. Or I'm unworthy. Or I'm an addict. And we put labels on ourselves. But you know what? That's not the story that the Holy Spirit living in you tells. He says, for the addict, you can be changed. You know, for those that are, you know, ungiving, you can be giving. For those that feel unloved, you are loved. You, while you say to yourself, the Holy Spirit writes it on your heart, you are loved. Ah, oh, the ones that feel and say to themselves, I'm dumb and uncreative, the Holy Spirit writes on your life. You are creative. You are created in God's image. You know, he's the one that made the elephant and the giraffe and all those animals that are just, you know, like amazing like a platypus. Who would have ever made that? God says, you are made in my image of a creative, loving being. You are beautiful. You know, when we think we're unattractive, he takes the un and makes us worthy. And he takes the un and he makes us attractive. And you know what? I, I think sometimes we take over the work of the Holy Spirit because Paul says here, you know, you, the Holy Spirit is the one that writes really great things on your life. And today I want to challenge you to be a great love letter to the world around you, to your family, to your friends. And I, I saw this TED talk that said that we should be the one percenters 1% of your day is 15 minutes. Write a letter. Well, Paul says 24-7, you write a letter. But I want you to write a letter of encouragement to somebody and be a love letter in your home with your friends and make sure you convey that to the people that are around you. Let the Holy Spirit be the one that tells you your worthiness. You are a great letter. And who knows, in 2,000 years, you might be the only love letter somebody else is reading, like we read the love letters of the apostles. That clip was so good. If you like that as much as me, you will like the rest of our stuff. So make sure you get the bell on, man. Get the bell on and check out these videos.